Yes, a godly man should be looking for his future wife and he should pursue her. However, a godly woman will also be helping her future husband find her. Therefore, here are four things God will lead a woman to do so God can use that to draw the man to her. Number one, try to arouse the right desires in him and try to avoid arousing the wrong desires in him. A man should initiate, be proactive, and lead in the relationship. But none of those principles say anything about what a woman should or shouldn't do. She also should be proactive. Again, the man should pursue. He should be the initiator, leader. But a woman can be proactive by helping the man do those things that he's called to do. One of the best ways a woman can do this is by arousing the right desires in him. In other words, Christian men, like all Christians, have the new nature and the old nature in their bodies. In the new nature, he will want to pursue a godly woman that he can provide for and protect. He will be looking for a godly woman who can be his partner, and he will want to be with a woman who can be a godly mother to his future children. In the flesh, however, a man will struggle with sexual temptation, with wanting to just enjoy the moment and wanting to indulge in worldly pleasures with this woman. So a godly man is going to be resisting those desires from the flesh. They, they're not just gonna go away because we're a Christian, but a godly man will be fighting those temptations and those fleshly desires. Therefore, he will be avoiding things and people that trigger his flesh. If you dress in an overly sexualized way or you flirt with him in a way that is intentionally trying to arouse his flesh, a godly man will try to avoid you. If, however, you show him that you are ready to be a godly wife by exhibiting the biblical modesty and maturity that God's daughter should exhibit, your feminine beauty will naturally arouse his masculine strength to pursue you. In short, the best way to draw a godly man to you so that he pursues you is to become the type of godly woman that he wants to be with. Just as you have a certain standard that you want a man to meet before you're going to want to be in a relationship with him, so too will a godly man have these desires for his future wife. God made the masculine to be aroused by the feminine. And when you embrace who you are as a godly woman, that will naturally draw the right man to you. Number two, show him that you like him. Many Christian women do everything in their power to to conceal their true feelings for the man that they like. The man would never know that she has feelings for him because, again, she's doing everything she can to treat that man exactly the same way as she treats every other guy. And worse yet, some women even treat the man that they like worse than the man that they don't like or the men that they don't like. In other words, they are very relaxed and casual and spend time with and give attention to men that they're not interested in. But when the guy comes around that they are interested in, they get very reserved or maybe they even give him the cold shoulder because they're so nervous. This is a mistake. If you like a guy, you should allow your feelings to be visible to him in subtle ways that inspire him to pursue you. If you are giving him the cold shoulder or treating him like a friend, why would he think he has a chance with you? You have to remember that because the guy is the pursuer, he is the one who has to face rejection in a more blunt and direct way. Now, of course, a woman has to face that rejection as well if she sends subtle signs and makes some proactive movements towards a man and he doesn't reciprocate like she hoped. That certainly stings and that can hurt and it can be scary to think about getting rejected, but think about the man's perspective who is openly sharing his feelings and openly pursuing the woman. Think about how that fear of rejection is that much greater when it comes to his role in the pre-dating phase. Men do need to take this risk. 
They need to face their fear of rejection and just pursue the woman they like. But as a woman, you should also help him pursue you by allowing your feelings for him to be shown. Talk to him more, show him more attention, sit by him in group settings, ask him if he's going to certain events, and show him that you are happy to see him when you two cross paths. He is much more likely to pursue you if he senses you may like him. Number three, help him feel like a man by allowing him to benefit you and make you happy. One of the primary driving motivations for why a man pursues a woman is because he wants to feel like a true man. True men pursue women, strong men do that. Therefore, a man knows if I wanna be a true man, a strong man, that's something I need to do. As a godly woman, you want to avoid anything that would disrespect him and thus make him feel like you don't see him as a strong man. It's okay to joke around. I'm not saying you need to bow down and idolize him. I'm just encouraging you to be encouraging towards his masculinity rather than negative or challenging. So if he opens the door for you or says his opinion about something or offers his assistance with something that you may that you may need help with if you give off the vibe of i don't need your help i'm a modern woman i don't need you like that he's not going to be interested in you he wants to be needed in fact a man needs to be needed if he doesn't feel like you have any room in your life for a masculine man a masculine man won't try to come into your life. The more you can make him feel like a strong man, the more he will be drawn to you. And number four, spend time in places where he can find you. Isaac, Jacob, and Moses all met their future wives at the well. And while Jesus certainly didn't have any romantic interest in the Samaritan woman, he did meet her at the well in John 4. In all these instances, these men used a well as a bridge to communicate with these women. Likewise, in a symbolic way, you have to spend time in places where you are visible to the godly men who could pursue you. Give them bridges to use to talk to you. Being a godly woman at home is important, but how will a godly man find you if you are hiding yourself all the time? You have to be a godly woman in public if you want a godly man to be drawn to you. Remember, Ruth would have never have met Boaz if she didn't first leave godless Moab and travel to God's land in Bethlehem. Symbolically, you have to do the same thing. If you hope for a good man to notice you, get to know you and pursue you, Avoid godless places where godly men don't go and spend your time in places where godly men do go. Giving this video a thumbs up is a huge blessing to this ministry. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com and until next time, God bless.